Hi. So I am joined by one of my favourite humans, singers, artists, free thinkers, one of the biggest beacons of energy that have swashed in and out of Noriki's life at different stages in this conundrum and in and out of my life and has sort of lilted me with her presence every time she's around and even when she's not, the fantastic Charlotte Church. Oh, that's so lovely. I think that's like the best introduction I've ever had. Oh, okay. You're a delight. <laughs> it, it came off the tongue. There was a hundred different versions of that and each one was just as elation fool. Wondrous, thank you. So I'm going to ask you 10 fast fire questions about this weird and bewildering gear and how it's catapulted in and out of your life. They start <laughs> easy and I'd say they remain easy. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, number one, winter or summer? Oh, summer. Number two, favourite book you've read this year? Um, oh, Rebecca Solnit, what's it called? Uh, it's about being lost. Field, field, oh, field guide to getting lost. Field guide to getting lost. You almost served it purpose by losing the title temporarily. I think <laughs> that must have been part of the process. I'm going to drop the numbers now. I didn't mean to start doing that. Okay. Um, your most listened to song of the year? Um, uh, probably uh, an artist called Phoebe Bridges. Um, I'm not sure where she's from. My, my husband basically curates a wonderful musical life for me, which I'm very lucky to indulge in. Um, but yeah, Phoebe Bridges, and it's a song about Halloween. So sorry, that's not very useful, but all, all the, this, this whole album of hers is absolutely delightful. Um, and then also probably there's a great tune called um, Table for One by Ego LMA, which is just a marvellous tune. Oh, nice. Bit of homework with that. We'll track down those. Um, Favourite film or TV series? Ooh, um, I really stopped watching mo most TV. Like, um, we've um, we got rid of our telly. We've got a projector screen, but it takes, um, we've got to set it up and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't been watching much at all. Big hitters this year were things like Normal People or The Queen's Gambit. Yeah, The Queen's Gambit. We, uh, yeah, I, I did watch The Queen's Gambit um, because I had a baby uh, recently and, um, uh, and so obviously haven't been drinking, but um, had, had a little drink um, with a friend, with some friends um, about three weeks ago and um, had a terrible, like horrendous hangover. And especially when you haven't drunk for... Yeah. Like ages like you know 16 months or something um it was absolutely brutal so i watched the entirety of the queen's gambit on the hangover day <laughs> okay. yeah there we go also a good answer to your favorite film or tv series is i've had a baby so <laughs> not really been doing that which is absolutely amazing news and um, this probably leads us into the next question which I, I think i maybe know the answer to something about 2020 that marks the year yeah so absolutely it was giving birth to my beautiful daughter frida simone on the 15th of august and uh, she is um absolutely delightful i planned to have her outside in the garden so yeah. i had a birth pool everything um, ready ready to go outside because I'm absolutely obsessed with nature and the outdoors and trees and such um, but in the end I, uh, I ended up having a screaming on the bathroom floor which was lush <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing. <laughs> something about 2020 you'd be quite happy to forget Ooh, um, um, the pain of childbirth, which I, which I partially have because Mother Nature is excellent at doing that sort of stuff. Um, but I'd like to forget. Um, hmm. I mean, I suppose in part, you know, even all the negative stuff, everything's a lesson, you know? So, you know, I'm thinking about just how obscene British politics has been, as have American politics. And, you know, sometimes it's stooped to such a like crazy level. I suppose the, the one thing that I could really, um, that I would really love to get rid of from 2020 is the rise of conspiracy theory. Cause I'm, I'm, that's the thing that I'm most worried about actually. 
because if we can't all agree on sort of a, a, a commonality of experience and, and what is real, um, I think we're really in a in a big pickle. <laughs> so yeah. um, I would bin the algorithms, which um, which sort of uh, are spreading these conspiracy theories. Yeah, I mean, there's been some brilliant kickback against that in terms of like all of the the net, big Netflix documentary that everyone watched. There's been a great New York Times series, but I've definitely seen it's not just your David Ikes anymore. I've seen mm -hmm. more people tuning in to these wild apocryphal conspiracy theories that I've never that I would never have expected. But I guess people have spent so much time investing themselves in these online worlds and thinking about how they can change it from sitting in the little captain seats of their houses that it's so easy to tap into these things, especially at a time where we're all stilled by something that we couldn't have, you know, conscientiously even predicted years ago, or some people may be able to, but we've been completely befuddled by it. So I guess you reach out in desperation for answers in a way you've not done before. Mm, yeah, I think so. And I think also it's about, you know, as, uh, I mean, before COVID, the world was just speeding up, getting faster, the rate of change. You know, it's, it's that everything is fragmenting into ever more complexity. So everything's becoming more fractal. And that's really difficult for our brains to um, understand, like the amount of information that, that we're, we're, you know, sort of trying to digest daily is, um, is insane. Um, and I think in a way, the conspiracy theory is about it being a very simple narrative. It's like there's, bad, there's a bad guy or there are a number of bad guys and they're trying to limit our freedoms, you know, this, that and the other. It's, you know, the vaccine is, you know, they're trying to put, put nano robots in us, whatever. It's a really sort of, there's a bad guy narrative. And unfortunately, it's far more nuanced and complex than that. Um, but I think that you know, our nervous systems are so overstretched with just trying to um, connect in this world of tech um, that, yeah, and, and with all of this information that um, I think what those conspiracy theories provide is, you know, some quite exciting, simple narratives. Um, but, but I mean, fr from, from the people that I know who have been taken in by it, it's... Um, I feel like it will in in the future potentially. I mean, let me who who knows what's going to happen, but I feel like it'll it'll almost be treated like a a mental health illness. Mm -hmm. That actually these people are going to need serious rehabilitation to go to have gone so far down the rabbit hole, and then sometimes I think, well, are they right? <laughs> am, am I am I really mainstream media? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it, isn't it? They've found a port in the storm and you're lashing against it and it would be easy to be there, but you just, you, you've just rationalised outside of it. So to sort of detox that out of our systems, yeah. um, what's your favourite thing about the festive season? Um, my favourite thing? Um, I absolutely love sourcing gifts. I love wrapping them. I, I spent ages wrapping presents and I try and present them as beautifully as I can um, whilst using, you know, sort of uh, the most sustainable things I can, brown paper and string. Oh, hello, darling. This is my little baby who's just woken up. Sorry. Oh, hi there. Sorry, we're stealing some of your time here. <laughs> it will be quick, I promise. Is it a deal? Hi, Noemiki. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's yeah, it's, it, it's an art form isn't it the paper the wrapping it's a manifestation oh, of your love absolutely I, I i think that the yeah the entire thing the entire package the, the presentation all of it it has to be sort of for that person setting your intentions um but also um i have found a great way to buy presents which isn't like terribly consumerist and um uh unethical which is um unicef have a great um, shop uh, mm -hmm. and not only are you buying you know all sorts of things for the for the charity vaccines and food parcels um, but they also source their um, gifts from crafts people and, and makers from all over the world and some people in um, really dire 
um, poverty. Um, and so, yeah, UNICEF is great Christmas gifts. Amazing. I'll link that in. Um, and then to end on a sort of glimmer of gusto and uh, positive auspicious ripples, much like the American election this year. Yes. Um, do you have a, a favourite poem or piece of poetry that, that might send us off into the happy ether? I do. Would you like me to read it? I would absolutely love you to read it, eh? Okay. Uh, this is Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> the world offers you to its imagination. Mm -hmm. or offers itself to your imagination one of the two either way it works yeah <laughs> it's a thumper great we'll end it there i will press stop on the record oh so